Before diving into today's stories, let's take a moment to express gratitude to Fume for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about bad habits. Do you have one that you're trying to kick? Well, you're not alone. But what if there was a way to make kicking that habit easier and even enjoyable? Enter Fume, an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that offers a natural and guilt-free solution. Imagine replacing your bad habit with something that not only tastes great, but also provides a satisfying sensory experience. With Fume, there are no electronics or harmful chemicals, just all natural, delicious flavors. Whether you're into crisp mint or zesty orange vanilla, Fume has a flavor for you. And with the new Fume base, it's even easier to incorporate Fume into your daily routine. The Fume Base, launched in January, provides a weighted stand to rest your fume on when not in use. With a magnet inside to keep your fume attached, you can even spin it around for a bit of fidgety fun. So why put off breaking that bad habit any longer? Join over 150,000 satisfied customers who have successfully kicked their habits with fume Ready to start your journey towards a healthier lifestyle? Head to Triumvira and pick up a journey pack today. It's time to accelerate humanity's breakup from destructive habits, one breath at a time. Now let's jump into our story. It was supposed to be one of the last deliveries of the night for me. I was working at Leonardo's Pizzeria and my boss Frank was on the night shift with me. He handed me a piece of paper with the address and phone number for the delivery. This was back in 2009, before GPS was standard on phones. Armed only with a flip phone and a trusty old map book, I set out to find the customer's house. The address was on Willows Road, a street nestled in a rural town surrounded by woods and farmland. The lack of streetlights made navigating even more challenging as I drove along the dark, quiet road, I couldn't shake off the feeling of anxiety creeping in. Pulling over a few times to check the map, I finally decided to call the number provided. After several rings, a deep, soft voice answered. It was the customer. He calmly guided me to his house, describing his driveway as a subtle dirt trail amidst the wilderness. Following his directions, I turned onto the narrow path and eventually spotted his small, one-story house. It was a relief to finally reach my destination, thanks to his patient guidance. But little did I know, this delivery would lead to an unexpected encounter that would stay with me for years to come. As I stood there with the pizzas in hand, I couldn't shake the eerie feeling that washed over me. The faint orange glow emanating from inside the house hinted at a scene that was both mysterious and unsettling. Parking my car beside the only other vehicle, a beat-up pickup truck, I approached the front door, pizzas in tow. But as I reached for a doorbell that wasn't there, I hesitated. Instead, I knocked my nerves tingling with anticipation. From within, I heard muffled music, followed by the sound of approaching footsteps. The door cracked open, revealing only a sliver of someone's face. It was the same person I had spoken to on the phone, a single eye peering out at me. Hey, you ordered the pizza, right? I asked nervously. His response was curt, confirming the order. As he disappeared to fetch the cash, the door creaked open on its own, revealing a dimly lit room shrouded in antiquity. The interior seemed frozen in time, with metal sheets covering holes in the floor and furniture that belonged to another era. Old music, reminiscent of the 1930s, played from a vintage record player adding to the eerie atmosphere. But it was the smell that truly unsettled me, a stench of decay that hung heavy in the air, waiting 
impatiently. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss, and the silence stretched on for too long. I ventured a cautious peek inside. Sir? I called out, my voice barely above a whisper. His response came from another room, requesting my presence in the kitchen. Despite the warnings from my co-workers about entering customers' homes, I stepped inside, my senses on high alert. The floor beneath me creaked with each step, a testament to the house's age and neglect. Navigating the narrow hallway, I spotted the entrance to the kitchen, where the man's voice beckoned me. But as I glanced to my left, a chilling sight greeted me narrow hallway lined with doors, each one a portal to the unknown, and at the end of it all, there he was, the man himself, dancing in a manner that sent shivers down my spine. His movements were unsettling, a grotesque display of self-indulgence that defied explanation. In any other circumstance, I might have chuckled at the absurdity of it all, but here, in this dilapidated house, filled with secrets and shadows. Laughter seemed like a distant memory. What kind of place had I stumbled into? And what awaited me in the depths of its darkness? Stepping away from the kitchen, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that gripped me, still clutching the pizza boxes. I hesitated, uncertain of what to do next. But as I took a few tentative steps towards the front door, a sudden movement caught my eye. Peering around the edge of the wall, the man's face reappeared. His eye fixated on me with an intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. In that moment, I grappled with a surge of conflicting emotions. Should I stay or should I leave? Despite the unsettling atmosphere, I mustered the courage to repeat my question about the cash. Yet, the man remained silent, his response replaced by an eerie giggle that reverberated through the room. Then, in a jarring shift of tone, he called out a name, Randall, his voice booming with an authority that seemed out of place in the dimly lit house. Feeling increasingly unnerved, I made a hasty retreat towards the front door, desperate to escape the palpable strangeness that permeated the air. As I glanced down the hallway, the sight that greeted me only added to my growing sense of dread. The man who had been dancing moments ago now stood motionless, his gaze fixed on me with an intensity that bordered on unsettling. With a sense of urgency, I fled the house, the weight of the pizzas forgotten in my haste, hastening back to my car. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered long after I had left the mysterious dwelling behind. As I peeled out of the driveway, the image of the open door loomed in my mind, a haunting reminder of the inexplicable events that had unfolded. Returning to the pizzeria, I relayed the bizarre encounter to Frank, who listened with a mixture of concern and disbelief. And as I recounted the events to my co-workers, the gravity of the situation began to sink in. What had started as a routine delivery had morphed into a surreal and unsettling experience that would haunt me for years to come. From that night on, I vowed never to enter a customer's home again. The memory of that eerie encounter, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurked beyond the threshold. And as I continued my work as a bicycle delivery guy in Newark, Delaware, I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister lurked beneath the surface of the seemingly quiet town a feeling that would only grow stronger as the days passed. Irritated by the delay, I begrudgingly accepted the delivery, eager to wrap up my shift 
and head home for some much needed rest. Mounting my bike, I navigated the familiar streets of Newark, Delaware, weaving through the bustling college town with practiced ease. Our use of bicycles for deliveries was a strategic choice, especially during the busy college seasons when traffic congestion could slow down our progress. Arriving at the address in record time, I wasted no time in announcing my presence with a series of loud knocks. But to my frustration, there was no response. Growing increasingly agitated, I considered the possibility of returning to the store empty-handed a prospect that only fueled my annoyance. As I pondered my next move, a rustling sound from across the street caught my attention. Squinting into the darkness, I spotted a shadowy figure lurking behind some bushes. Their gaze fixed on me with an intensity that sent chills down my spine. Despite my mounting unease, I tried to shrug it off, chalking it up to paranoia. But as the minutes ticked by with no sign of life from the house, my anxiety spiked. Was this some kind of setup? Could I be walking into a trap? Glancing back at the figure across the street, I felt a surge of panic wash over me. The sense of being watched was palpable, and I couldn't shake the feeling that danger lurked just beyond the shadows. Determined to fulfill my duty, I continued to pound on the door, my frustration mounting with each unanswered knock. Finally, the door creaked open, revealing a bleary-eyed individual who seemed more annoyed than anything else. Explaining the situation, I learned that the actual recipient of the order was passed out drunk upstairs, a fact that baffled me considering how quickly he had succumbed to slumber after placing the order. As the man trudged upstairs to rouse his roommate, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Glancing back once more, I noticed the shadowy figure had edged closer, their presence now more ominous than ever. With every instinct screaming at me to flee, I resisted the urge knowing that leaving my bike unattended could spell disaster. Thankfully, the encounter was brief, and soon the man returned, reporting that his roommate was unresponsive behind a locked door. With a sense of relief, I handed over the order and made a swift exit, the unsettling presence across the street still lingering in my mind. As I pedaled away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped something sinister, a feeling that would haunt me long after I had left that darkened street behind. As I hastily explained the situation to the disoriented roommate, I felt a sense of urgency gnawing at me. The absence of a tip was the least of my concerns. I just wanted to get out of there. After some insistence, the roommate reluctantly signed for the order, and I handed it over with a quick thank you. Rushing back to my bike, I was eager to put this strange encounter behind me, but as I prepared to pedal away, a sudden commotion shattered the stillness of the night. With a jolt of adrenaline, I spun around to see the shadowy figure lunging towards me from behind the bushes. In an instant, my instincts kicked into overdrive. The figure, clad in jeans, boots, and a black hoodie with the hood drawn up, seemed to be wearing some sort of mask, his intent obscured by the darkness. With a chilling realization, I caught sight of a glint of metal, a blade gleaming in his hand. Without a moment to spare, I knew I had to act fast. The surrounding streets offered no escape, but there was one option, a nearby bike trail, shrouded in darkness, but familiar to me nonetheless. With a surge of adrenaline, I pedaled furiously towards the trail, my heart pounding in my chest. Every shadow, every rustle of leaves, 
sent shivers down my spine as I raced along the unlit path. The darkness seemed to close in around me, amplifying my sense of dread with each passing moment. But despite my fear, I pressed on, driven by the instinct to survive. Mercifully, the trail wasn't long, and soon I emerged back into the relative safety of civilization. Gasping for breath, I struggled to process the events that had just unfolded. The encounter had been too close for comfort, too surreal to comprehend. Returning to the store, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered like a shadow. Without a word to my co-workers or boss, I clocked out and retreated to the safety of my car, my mind reeling with unanswered questions. As I drove home in the pre-dawn hours, the weight of what had transpired settled heavily upon me. I had narrowly escaped a potentially dangerous situation, but the memory of that night would haunt me for years to come. And from that moment on, I knew that I could never take my safety for granted, not in a town as seemingly tranquil as Newark. Reflecting on the ordeal, I realized that danger could lurk in the most unexpected places, striking when least expected. It was a sobering reminder that vigilance was paramount, especially in the dead of night, when shadows concealed all manner of threats. And so, armed with the knowledge that safety was never guaranteed, I vowed to always be prepared trust my instincts, and to never underestimate the darkness that lurked just beyond the glow of the streetlights. As I followed the directions to the address provided, I found myself on a desolate road marked by a foreboding dead-end sign. The darkness seemed to press in around me, enveloping every little house in its shroud. Even the house I was supposed to deliver to was cloaked in pitch blackness its windows staring back at me like empty eyes. With trepidation, I stepped out of my car, relying on my phone's flashlight to guide my way through the overgrown grass. Every step felt like a journey into the unknown, the silence broken only by the sound of my own footsteps. This didn't feel right, but I pressed on, determined to fulfill my delivery. Approaching the front door, I pressed the doorbell, but there was no response. Knocking, I waited, my nerves on edge as I anticipated the customer's arrival. With each passing moment, the darkness seemed to close in around me, casting doubts upon the legitimacy of this delivery. Messaging the customer through the Uber Eats app, I sought confirmation of the address, hoping to dispel the growing sense of unease. But as I waited in the darkness, a creeping suspicion began to take hold. Was this all just a ruse? Then, from the shadows surrounding me, a voice pierced the silence. A man's voice beckoning me over. Panic surged through me as I frantically scanned the darkness, searching for the source of the sound with trembling hands. I announced my intention to leave the food on the front porch, my voice betraying the fear that gripped me. Retreating to my car, I dared not look back, fearing what lurked in the darkness behind me. But as I reached my vehicle, a chilling realization washed over me, the unmistakable sound of air escaping from slashed tires. With dread pooling in my stomach, I inspected the damage, confirming my worst fears. In that moment, the gravity of the situation hit me like a ton of bricks. I was stranded, alone in the darkness, with no way to escape. It was a nightmare come to life, a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows. Fumbling for my phone, I dialed for help, praying that someone would come to my aid. But as I waited in the eerie silence, a 
sense of utter helplessness washed over me, trapped in the darkness, with no one to hear my cries for help. I could only wait and hope for salvation to come, who were assigned to the case, recounting every detail of the harrowing ordeal. The days that followed were a blur of police interviews, medical examinations, and a lingering sense of fear that refused to dissipate. The knowledge that those responsible for the attack were still out there, lurking in the shadows, weighed heavily on my mind. Despite the trauma I had endured, I was determined to seek justice. I cooperated fully with the authorities, providing any information that could lead to the apprehension of the perpetrators. But as the days turned into weeks, and then months, without any significant leads, I began to lose hope. The incident had left me shaken to my core, robbing me of my sense of security, and leaving me constantly looking over my shoulder. The once familiar streets of Newark now seemed foreign and hostile. Every shadow holding the potential for danger in the aftermath of the attack, I found myself grappling with a whirlwind of emotions, anger, fear, and a profound sense of vulnerability. But amidst the darkness, there was a glimmer of hope, a resolve to reclaim my sense of safety and rebuild what had been shattered. With the support of my loved ones and the unwavering determination of law enforcement, I slowly began to piece my life back together. It wasn't easy, and there were moments when the trauma threatened to consume me, but I refused to let fear dictate my life, choosing instead to confront it head on. As time passed, the wounds healed, both physical and emotional. The scars remained, a constant reminder of the night that changed everything. But with each passing day, I grew stronger, more resilient, determined not to let the darkness win. Today, I stand as a survivor, a testament to the power of resilience in the face of adversity. Though the shadows may still linger, I refuse to be consumed by fear. For in the darkest of nights, there is always a glimmer of light a beacon of hope that guides us through the darkness. And as I look towards the future, I do so with unwavering determination, knowing that I have emerged from the darkness stronger than ever before. It's truly disheartening to hear that justice wasn't served in your case, and that the perpetrators managed to evade accountability. The realization that someone exploited a vulnerable situation for their own gain is both infuriating and deeply unsettling. Facing such a traumatic experience undoubtedly leaves scars, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally as well. It's a stark reminder of the risks we face in our daily lives and the importance of staying vigilant and cautious especially in unfamiliar or isolated situations. But despite the pain and loss you endured, it's commendable that you found the strength to pick yourself back up and move forward. Taking a break to heal and reflect was a wise decision, and returning to daytime deliveries shows a resilience and determination to not let fear dictate your actions. Your story serves as a cautionary tale for others, highlighting the dangers that lurk in the shadows and the importance of staying alert and aware of our surroundings. And while the scars of that night may never fully fade, your courage and resilience are a testament to your strength. As you continue on your journey, may you find peace and healing, and may you never again experience such darkness in the light of day. As you resumed your daytime deliveries, it must have been a relief 
to navigate the familiar streets bathed in sunlight, the shadows of the past gradually receding with each passing day. The hustle and bustle of the city, once a source of anxiety, now offered a sense of security and normalcy. But beneath the surface, the memory of that fateful night lingered, a reminder of the fragility of safety and the importance of remaining vigilant. Yet, with each successful delivery, you reclaimed a piece of your confidence, refusing to let fear hold you back. Your decision to return to work despite the trauma speaks volumes about your resilience and determination. It's a testament to your strength and courage a refusal to let the darkness of the past dictate your future. And as you continue to navigate the streets of Newark, may you find solace in the warmth of the sun. And may each delivery serve as a testament to your unwavering spirit. Though the scars may remain, they are a reminder of your strength, a badge of honor earned through adversity. As you move forward, may you find peace and healing, and may each day bring you closer to a brighter tomorrow. And remember, you are not alone. Your story serves as a beacon of hope for others who may be facing their own struggles in the darkness. In the end, your story is not just one of survival, but of resilience strength, and the indomitable human spirit. Through the darkness and the shadows, you emerged, scarred, but not broken. A testament to the power of courage and determination. As you journey forward, may you carry with you the lessons learned from that fateful night, the importance of staying vigilant, the value of resilience, and the strength that lies within. And though the road ahead may be fraught with challenges, know that you are not alone. In the light of day, may you find solace, healing, and hope. And may each step you take be a testament to your unwavering spirit, a beacon of light in a world that can sometimes be shrouded in darkness. So, as you continue on your path, remember the strength that lies within you, the courage that carried you through the darkest of nights, and know that no matter what challenges may come your way, you have the power to overcome them, guided by the light that burns bright within your soul. Keep shining, keep moving forward, and never forget the resilience that defines you. For in the end, it is not the darkness that defines us, but the light that we carry within.